I don't think any other class that I've taken has changed who I am as a person. This has been different in a good way. A friend of mine told me about an artist in residency and we looked at this flyer with Fred in this big baritone sax and we looked up his Big Red Media website and listened to the music and the fusion of Chinese opera and jazz just completely blew my mind away. The residency program is a very special one. It's the only one in this country that um, focuses on, on interdisciplinary work and uh, the interdisciplinary nature of it is very, very important. Hip hop. This is for you, class. Hip hop. My medium is choreography, spoken word poetry, and hip hop as pedagogy. I taught a course on hip hop culture that brought together the African American Studies Department and sociology and dance and theater. You know, the whole, the whole impetus for theater design is a collaborative art form. You can't do a show about the Middle East without knowing nothing about the Middle East, you know? And so when we're talking about batiks and we're talking about Indonesia, it goes back to the fabric and how is it done and how is it worn and those kinds of things. What I'm hoping is that the we're setting the tone for collaboration and also... Curiosity. Curiosity, thank you. Yeah. Let me... Because we need higher heat for that and longer time. I've Having a working artist is so amazing because she is able to not only show us, you know, the technique and the theory of it, but how, in the moment, it applies to their profession. But she had placed a spell upon their house. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to work with an expert in our field. I mean, this is the sort of thing that doesn't come along very often. At the University of Wisconsin, of all places, they got Hank Zaposnik, you know. I mean, one of the first Klezmer transcription books that I got is one that he wrote called The Complete Klezmer. So, I mean, it is really amazing that, you know, all of a sudden here is Hank Zaposnik in town, in the middle of Wisconsin. Um, and not only Hank, but he's bringing the Klezmer Roadshow with him, you know, so we'll get a little taste of the uh, Klezmer camps that go on on the East Coast here in Madison in April. Vincent Vidal single. That's this is the Yiddish, by the way. <laughs> I don't want to confuse anyway. Oh my God, my Yiddish is getting good. You could just think of it as a music class, but it's really about um, how that klezmer tradition was carried over so from know, Europe and um, ethnicity, culture, religion, assimilation. Here's the English translation. So it's really interesting. The original rhyming pattern. My wife and I just parted. And I'm back where I started, like a bachelor when I was a kid. The most interesting thing was the students having completely different backgrounds that sort of defies the stereotypes of, of students who would be into what I wanted to teach, you know, Yiddish American popular culture. You would think, oh yeah, well, you know, Jewish studies and, you know, Jew not, not anything like that. I am a boarder at my wife's. Having such a diverse uh, student body was an exciting process. I, I just hope my students don't realize how much I was learning. I'm a pre-veterinary medicine major, so for me taking this class was just a, a soul breather. I've always wanted to take an art class, but they're so hard to get into, I mean, if you're not an art major, so this was a great opportunity. We learned the camera and the editing skills and found a subject and, and filmed them, came back, uh, put together a story and polished it in two months, in a generous two months. And the whole time you're thinking, oh my god, this is going to show in front of other people. So you're, you're petrified.
by hosting a weekly public forum, we were able to access a really broad swath of the Madison community. When we had Alex Olson here, for instance, we packed the theater with the LGBT community. You know, when we had Rennie Harris here, all the dancers came through. When we had Maida Del Valle, it was, you know, every Puerto Rican in Madison, you know, showed up, you know, and all the fans of, of deaf poetry. So it brought the community to campus and provided a um, really tenable and viable exchange of ideas between um, folks on campus and folks in, in Madison in general. In the dance band, we had some uh, music faculty, we had some music students, and we had community people, and not just from the physical community surrounding Madison, but people came from, from other states. We had like people from five states. At 12.30, we'll work on the show, okay? Performing at the Union Theater, particularly with Fred's band coming, you know, uh, this is not something that you that you get from an everyday class, you know. And and they come here to us to play with us for our midterm. And these are incredible musicians, and they help us with our performance. probably one of the most beneficial things that's happened to me. Not, not even in a class, just happened to me. Being in this class allowed me to grow both in performance and intellectually and um, within myself. The day that I performed in class, I cried because it was the first time that it felt real to me, like this is something I can do. The sense of elation and joy and just complete lightness when the film screened in front of this audience of 1,500 and people gasped and they laughed and they clapped and you just realized that it was all worth it. <laughs> 